if you're a design engineer or a front-end engineer or someone who's trying to create better looking layouts this video is for you now you might be struggling with a lot of design issues into your web applications that you might want to work on this video will help you figure out some of the constructs or some of the modern trends which are there in the design and engineering industry and you might be able to pick some of this and implement into your workflow or these design patterns will help you create better looking layout. In this video, we're going to talk about five design trends that can help you create better looking layouts and better looking websites. So let's get right into the video. The first layout that I want to talk about is called Bento Grid. Now, what is a Bento Grid? You might have seen a lot of Bento Grids around. It is nothing but a skewed or asymmetric arrangement of grids. Now I can give you a lot of Bento Grid examples, but I'll go to Dribbble. So if you go to UI8.net, search for bento grid you'll get a lot of bento grid here and this is this is what a bento grid is basically review we'll be able to set i'm talking about this this right here is a bento grid and it looks good it looks modern it looks engaging if you have content and skeletons to match for it for example if i go to some so this is a card this is a content and this part above is a skeleton so if you have something and you can arrange in an asymmetric manner that will be a bento grid and we've got many bento grid examples on pro as well so if i go to pro eternity and i go to bento grid section you see we've got a lot of bento grid options this if you start importing it into your layout and i'll do so right now you can create amazing looking layouts with ease so what i'll do is i'll quickly open a code editor and i'll try to import this component uh, so that you can follow along what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy the code which is here and i'll call it app bento grid i'll paste this bento grid right here nothing fancy just a bento grid i'll also copy a hero section so that i have something to talk about maybe i'll keep this uh, hero section so i'll just copy now we have this hero i'll just quickly move it to hero components i'll go to page and i will remove this and i'll import hero section with beams and tool now if i go to localhost 3000 so now you have this hero section which is already there and you have this bento grid right here now this is called bento grid now this can be according to your project or whatever you can fill in these skeletons or you can modify the copy accordingly but in it conveys the message in a better way what happens is when you integrate this bento grid or any kind of bento grid into your applications you can convey let's say three to four to five features all at once in one glance in one section that is the benefit of a bento grid and this is a modern design trend which is working a lot for example this bento grid if you import any of this uh this reacts to even this so you have to sweat the details on the bento grid as well because you know if it is a bento grid but the skeletons are not nice it won't pop out and you want some popping out if you want to make your landing pages stand out so this was what a bento grid is i already have a video on how you can create your own bento grids that i talk about in one of my videos i'll link it here and you can go ahead and watch that video where i talk about how you can create bento grids what are the different aspects of it i probably just in the tailwind CSS series but you get the point cool moving on second design trend or design paradigm or modern trend you can say is uh animating icons now what is animating icons you are already familiar with motion for react what i want you to understand here is you can animate icons with motion either it is at path length or even the rotation or skew or whatever you can animate it with framer motion or motion for react which is now animating icons stand out because for example if you see this hero section right i can have like three different or i'll just go ahead and create it what i'm talking about so i'll just close this i'll go to hero section and this is all there which is nice and cool and easy collisions okay we have got this h2 here what i want to have here is i want to have explore beams is this button right below this i want to have a grid of features and i call it grid calls three gap 10 and i want to have some features along with an icon but dev and I'll have a P tower H4 tag here. Copy components on top of the image that we have, which is this. Okay, it is right here now. And I want to see what is the width of it. Okay, width full, max width 7XL, MX auto, cool. And I want to have PY20. And I also want to have relative in Z20. So it is on top. Now we have the container lined up. What I want to have here is a copy. Uh, and along with that, I want to have icons here as well, which I will later convert to motion icons, but you'll see in a, in a minute, which is evolutionary in my opinion pool i want to have i'll call this maybe grid pool uh so this is the grid that i have import this grid over here uh now we have the grid it should line up pretty easily and i want to call it class name text 4xl font media text neutral let's say 700 
cool and this i have that is fine what i also want to have here is an icon and i'll go to tabular icons again my favorite icon library tabular icons and i'll go to icons and I'll search for this is for copying components with a single click. So I want to have a copy animation. Yes, I can copy, but I'll just copy the SVG. I'll call it const copy icon so that I want to play with it a bit. Return this. I want to have props and I'll just pass in props. Props would be react.sg tool. And I want to have it here. Class name would be size six. So now if I have this, you see this copy component. I'll also give this text neutral or text blue 600 or blue pink, maybe 500. Looks a bit cutish, I would say. I'll give it that these are segregated. Cool. Can I don't have medium man. Maybe I'll have LG. But it's see, I sweat a lot of detail, so sorry about that. Cool. So you have this right here. I want to once I hover over this container, sort of which I have, I want to animate this icon but before that i maybe want to replicate it a bit i have three in gap maybe i'll increase to 20 cool i have these and now maybe size i want to increase that these are more stark and i want to have different icons so tabular icons why i want to say copy components second would be change theming in a single click this has been the easiest deploy it to your favorite hosting provider with 10 steps no cap cool this is what we have maybe i'll change icons to theming code maybe i'll have this the third would be terminal i'd say third can be this it's simple third would be terminal icon now we have these three icons right here now what i want to do is once i hover over onto this specific dev items or devs i want this icon to animate for that i'll have to convert this to a motion div and for that i'll have to first make it as use client and i'll call it import motion from motion react cool i'll call it motion dot dev and on hover which is while hover i want to have a prop of animate that means however the children are having variants for this i already explained in, into my framework motion playlist which is motion for react playlist but if you want your child items to animate if the if the parent is hovered over or clicked on that is how you do it you do what you want to do i mean if you want to hover you want to have a variant going on now if i go to copy icon i'll, I'll call it motion dot svg okay svg motion props you also need to because cool now we have it and i'll call it variants would be animate would be simple x would be 0 5 minus 5 0 and transition would be duration would be 1 ease would be ease out or ease in out so if i refresh let's see you see this animating right but ease out is i'll call it maybe uh, first it has to be rapid so i'll call it maybe 0 0.3 this icon is animating i can go ahead and animate the path as well on hover which is again something that you can go the extra mile so if i remove this and remove this you'll know only this remains so what i'll do is i'll probably call it motion dot path and variants would be animate path length zero it can be zero one zero so if i go now and hover over it you see what it does jittery but i'll call it zero one or zero or one so that it lays out it becomes zero it comes out to be one so you have some animation going on and it is happening all on dev click or dev hover by the way that you can do so now we have it what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do it for all the other ones as well motion dot dev motion dot dev motion dot dev motion dot dev. i'm going to call it motion dot svg man and i'm going to have variants not path length but these ones just simple simple animations of transform that is translate x and i have it here now if i hover over this now this is a bit redundant i'll call it motion container and i'll play children turn uh, motion dot dev this thing i want to return and i'll call it motion dev cool or not motion dev man motion container Cool. now we have it now if i refresh you see this works so that is what i'm talking about animating icons now it will take a bit of time and you can play around with these animations or transforms or whatever you want to do with these icons but if you put in the heart into micro animations and animating icons in general you can do wonders it can look really good and it will make sure your cards your things stand out cool moving on to the next point now i also want to talk about glass morphism and blur glass morphism is not a new concept it is a very old concept in, in fact but if you use it right if you use it tastefully you can create a lot better looking cards or you know even something which is superimposed for example if i 
I add a bit of blur on top of these cards, you can make them stand out. And that is exactly what I'm going to do right now. What I'm going to try here is basically glass morphism includes having blur in the background or having blur in the foreground as well. In, in background, it works better. But if you have it in the foreground, it works as well. What I want to say here is if I zoom into one of these containers, let's style a bit more to these and we'll talk about why glass morphism is one of the craziest ways to, you know, make your card stand out or make your design stand out. So if I'll go to motion container, I have this. I'll give it a class name of P4 rounded MD or Excel and backdrop blur SM. So now you see if I go to cards here, you see backdrop is a bit blurred. Now it is a lot blur. That is not what I want. Maybe I want two pixels. So you see there is a bit of blur at the back, which makes it stand out. Now I'll give it a border so that you see it better. Border, border, neutral. 200 or let's let's make it a bit better okay what do we have here we have this and i'll give it a border okay let me let me try something border border neutral 200 i have this border now you see the glass the backdrop gets a bit faded or blurred maybe four pixels so the difference is not that visible but you see it is there go to page go to this section where is the glass by and bg gray 100 i want to go with it h full h full will be this takes in the entire one so you have these and rounded would be oh, 16 pixel minus 12 pixels this is what i want for the rounded radiuses which is nice and i want to maybe have a bit of darker variation 100 is too much 50 and i want to give it relative don't want to give it rounded i want to give it rounded and to have some sort of dots so i'll call it dots return size one rounded full bg gray 100 absolute right one top one and i want to give it a relative bit of solidity there i want to import dots here i want to four of these right left bottom bottom see what do we have here oh it fucked up it will be left and bottom right and bottom size can be better let's say three it is visible bit you see these dots at the end that's what i'm talking about and the background that you see right it's a bit glassy maybe i can reduce the blur to two pixels so you see it better but if you have more content going on for example uh, if i have this right here if i put one of these on top of this image that i have it'll look way better but you get the point right there is a bit of blur at the background which is glass morphism and you have this now glass morphism works really well in case of nav bar so what i'll do is i'll quickly import nav bar from one of the externality components let's see i'll go to nav bars import nav bar simple nav bar with hover effects go to page have it right here so you have this nav bar over here which i want to style a bit separately i don't want this i don't want this and i have this nav bar i want it to be fixed that is one so maybe i'll just style the desktop nav bar one sticky so it will be fixed now you see and top would be 10 now you see now the background that you see right here is white currently which i don't want maybe i wanted 20 and backdrop blur would be sm so now you see what i'm talking about the background the, see see the backdrop is nonsensical fine See the backdrop of it. You'll notice it better if I just give it a bit border, 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 or neutral 200, or even if I give it a shadow. So you, you notice it better. That's what glass morphism is. And that really can help you make your website stand out. Now, this is one of the features that I had right here of or one of the examples of glass morphism. You can go ahead and create many of such examples, but use it tastefully. Do not overdo it. Otherwise, it won't look that good. But you have a working example of glass morphism right here, which, you know, you can, it's a bit translucent i'd say but it works cool moving on to the next one the next one that i want to talk about is micro in skeletons so micro interactions in skeletons is one of the other things that i really wanted to talk about now what are micro interactions let's understand first go to any component for example if i go to clerk dot com oh that's a really nice website man love i love 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 clerk so if you see this this is a micro interaction this is a micro interaction. This right here is a micro interaction. This is a micro interaction. You can have all sorts of micro interactions, but it has to be tasteful. Now, this entirely is a bento grid, but this right here is a micro interaction and you have to play with the skeletons a lot. Now, like I said, this is the copy of the card and this is the skeleton of the card whatever you see right here because we are trying to convey a message here through a skeleton or through an illustration. So this is what people also generally refer to as skeletons. 
this is one of the things that you have to sweat a lot in order to nail down the right details and convey the message across now if you want to get good at it there is only one way and that is practicing a lot micro interactions within cards work the best and you have to sweat a lot of details into it we have a lot of micro interactions at eternity ui and pro as well that is why it works you know this type of layout you can see in a lot of websites and a lot of websites will leverage this to actually bring out the best for example if i go to wheat again these micro interactions are really tasteful they convey a message see from left you pass in jsx sas swelt and it outputs html css and javascript right that is what wheat does wheat is a bundler wheat is a dev tool that is how they are going to convey it through micro interaction and this is what you have to nail down the part and it comes with practice i can i can show it to you in this video because it takes a lot of time to build but this is one of the other features that you can focus on and really nail down on the card details so example again this is again a bento grid and they've got really tasteful micro interactions right here if i hover over or if i refresh you'll see this this looks really good cool micro interactions was other thing that i also wanted to talk about let's move on to the last one and the last one here is scroll driven animations or websites anything attached to a scroll is trending these days a lot of companies are following it a lot of companies are building their landing pages for example if i go to anti metal and recently they have revamped their website their entire website if i scroll this is a scroll based website so keep on scrolling you'll keep on discovering new things about the product now i'm not a fan of this scroll driven websites a lot but this one in specific really looks really 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 good now a lot of these websites you'll find are not that straightforward it takes a lot of effort to you know build oh, this is a really cool micro interaction a lot of websites you'll see are focusing a lot on scroll driven animations now i'll say that again some people like it some don't but it is working as of today there is other website that i also wanted to talk about was code sand or sand pack if you go to sand pack again this is also a scroll driven animation website a lot of scroll happening a lot of things changing so if i scroll up you see this tag or this div moves i have created a dedicated playlist on motion and i've talking about a lot of scroll driven animations there and how you can create them using you know you scroll you scroll i mean there are a lot of other moving parts into scroll animations so you should definitely check out that video on how you can create micro interactions and scroll animations with frame or motion but this is one such example sandpack is built by code sandbox and code sandbox is a big company and metal is a startup apple does a lot of scroll driven animations so you go to apple com so if you see once i scroll you see the you see the dev changes that is also a scroll animation scroll and you'll see other scroll animations as well things come on scroll things go away on scroll but yeah a lot of scroll websites are gathering attention these days and they convey a message according to them in a scroll manner so if you scroll if you scroll if you scroll you'll get you're going to get a lot of more information as you scroll i'm not a huge fan of scroll i'd say that again and say it again and again i'm not a huge fan of scroll but scroll can prove to be a really helpful asset if you're trying to convey a message in a better way you might not be able to convey it in a bento grid or a feature section or a simple plain website i mean if you can you can but if you want some more flair to it some more design aesthetics to it i think you should go for scroll animations cool so these are the five points that i wanted to talk about on how you can create great looking websites as of 2025 or 2026 or whatever or whenever you are watching this video so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned something do like the video do share your uh, feedback on what we can talk about next and we'll be happy to do so tab tak ke liye bhai jai hind bahut dhyan rakho bahut kaam karo bahut paise kamao and i'll see you in the next one see you